Welcome to Singly God's People with your host, Dennis Beard. Why are there so many that will fall away in the last days? Why would after a person that's lived for God decades, maybe 50, 60, even 70 years, fall away from the faith? Because iniquity abounds, the love of many will wax cold. But iniquity is not sin in that sin is the transgression of the law. It goes even deeper. Because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Iniquity, by definition, is lawlessness, not following the leading of the Spirit of God and doing His will. That's the reason when we pray and say, I'll do this or I'll do that, if God will. We've left that mostly, mostly out of the Christian faith, saying that whatever I do will prosper and therefore Wherever I set my feet, God will prosper the my feet and the work of my hands. Now, God wishes above all things that we may as prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Very true. But the soul has to prosper first. Now, we're talking about a root of bitterness in the last days because iniquity will abound. Those that we think call evil good will prosper and they call good evil. And we're thinking, God, why don't you judge these people for your great name's sake and vindicate your word? And God will vindicate them. And that judgment of God on the day of the Lord will convince all the ungodly of their ungodly deeds which they've ungodly committed. But until then, we find that many will prosper in the the leading of the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Why will that be? Well, many are provoked unto wrath, literally saying, can God provide a table in the wilderness? There is a wilderness journey that we as believers all must go through. It's called the cross, crucifying the flesh with the affections of the lust, and very few understand the cross, that we must glory in that cross. That's the thing about Laodicea. Said it, I am increased with goods. I'm blessed of God. I'm clothed, fed, and have need of nothing. There's nothing else in the word of God that I need. Not realizing, Jesus said, you're cold, wretched, naked, and destitute. What's the problem? The problem is they think they have need of nothing. They've arrived. They're saved, sanctified, and on their way to heaven. But we must all come to perfection, to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. Most do not understand that. That when we are redeemed, then he expects us, through sanctification of the Spirit, to crucify the flesh with the affections and the lust, to do the will of God. And this is where we grow, up into Jesus in all things of faith. Now faith is a substance of things, hope are the evidence of things not seen. Faith, then, is not that of the law. Not going about to establish our own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God by faith that Paul said, I've suffered the loss of all things that do count in my tongue, that I might win Christ and be found, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God by faith. Those are the things that must be received in the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus, where we will walk in the light as he's in the light, not unto a partial knowledge, not having partial truth, being perfected. And most of the denominational churches believe that there is no way that the church, while in the days of our flesh, can be perfected. When Jesus commanded that, and the constitution of the kingdom of heaven, saying, Be ye therefore perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5. In the constitution of the kingdom of heaven, it was required to make the kingdom of heaven. If anyone does not do the will of God, that quest for life, to find what the purpose and will of God is for each individual member, they will not have access into the kingdom of heaven. That is stated. In Matthew 7, verse 22 on. Not all that say to me, Lord, Lord, will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Somebody said, well, they weren't saved to begin with. Yes, they were. They called him Lord, Lord. 1 Corinthians 12 states that no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. They've got that revelation. They've been born again of the water and the spirit and are newborn babes, literally born again. But they have grown from that to little children, knowing that Jesus is the Lord, calling him the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, the Father of glory. And Jesus stated, except you believe that I am he, the Father of glory, you shall die in your sins. That revelation of who Jesus is, is a requisite to enter the kingdom of heaven. Many that even though that have been born again of the water and the spirit, baptized after repentance in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sin and receiving the Holy Ghost, being newborn babes, desiring the sincere milk of the word they may grow thereby, still going to the next step of little children, going from newborn babes to little children, there, as we see stated in John's epistle, 1 John 2, 12 through 14. I write to you little children. You've grown from babies to little children because you have known the Father. Your sins are forgiven for his name's sake, and the key is that you have known the Father. You have a definite growth from newborn babies to little children. But that is not enough. The Lord requires us to go on to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, doing the purpose and will of God in each individual's life. Now, that's where many will stop and say, I already have salvation. I'm not required to go on any higher glory in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm satisfied with where I'm at, and I'm satisfied and settled on my leaves. Woe be to them that are settled on their leaves. Uh, the Lord God said, uh, because that he would judge. And he said there that the Lord himself would uh, judge Jerusalem, the church of the living God, and punish all those that are settled on their leaves. Woe unto them that are settled on their leaves, or they're literally experienced, do not want any deeper depth of God and they're settled and will not go on any further in the doctrine of Christ. Not going on to perfection. Not going to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that's where many will be denied access to the kingdom of heaven. Woe be unto them that are at ease in Zion. They're satisfied that they're status quo. And because of that, they are not stirred in their spirit to go on to the measure of the statue of Jesus Christ unto perfection. Now, we're all called to go to the measure of the statue of Jesus Christ, and very few understand that this is required of us to have access and salvation and enter into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, Jesus stated, Matthew 7, Not all the same to me, Lord, Lord, even though you've been born again even though that you know that he is the father of glory, that Jesus is the father revealed, that he is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. He is God with us, Emmanuel. And still will not have access to the kingdom of heaven, not have an entrance because they did not do the will of God. Jesus stated, not all that say to me, Lord, Lord, will be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven but only those that do the will of God. Now they will profess. Now, Lord, we have prophesied in your name. And in your name, we've cast out devils. And in thy name, we've done many wonderful works. Jesus did not deny that. However, he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity, lawlessness, not following the leading of the Holy Ghost in doing the will and purpose of God in each individual members of the body of Christ in their life. That is required. And that's the quest for eternal life. Paul stated it. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God that worketh in you both the willing to do of his good pleasure. 
There we need to take heed of the things that we've heard, lest at any time we let them depart. And one promise slip of us, and we fall short of entering into his rest. That's Hebrews 4. He also states that in doing the will of God, Paul tells us very explicitly in Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, brethren, those are born-again believers, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice. There's the cross. Today we have a cross as Christianity. Sanctification and belief of the truth is out the window. We don't believe we have to crucify the flesh with the affections and the lust. You can't have the world in Jesus too. We're told you can, but it is a lie. He said there, point blank, straightforward. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Each individual member. We are unprofitable servants. We've only done that which is our duty to do. No man can glory in it because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is leading us and guiding us into all truth and to perfecting us, perfecting us unto that measure of Jesus. Into an I, an exact mirror image of Jesus. And some that's hard to grasp. That God expects that. Matter of fact, he's given us the spirit of God, his own spirit, the Jesus, the Holy Ghost, Christ in us, to get us there. He's given us the power of God unto salvation to bring forth these works that will glorify our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. And the works will follow us. Where we find that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Why would they be acceptable? By doing the will of God. Otherwise, our own works of the flesh are not acceptable before God. Holy and acceptable for, before God and being not conformed to this world. We can't have the world in Jesus. Being not conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That mind has to have the mind, of that believer must have the mind of Christ. It must be transformed to do the will of God and purpose of God that he set each individual member by the faith given to each individual member in the body of Christ. Therefore, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith, whatever he called you for, whatever purpose that he has expected you to fulfill in bringing glory to him. He's given you the power of God to do it. He's enabled us all to do that through the power of the Holy Ghost, the Christ in you, the Jesus in you. Jesus is that Holy Ghost. That man is now a quickening spirit, the Holy Ghost in us. And he said, now, don't be conformed to this world. Be you transformed, a transformation going on. A daily sacrificing of our own will in doing the will of God. But we have pretty well across the board in the nominal Christianity is a crossless Christianity saying that is not necessary. It's not essential. You just believe on Jesus, you're saved, that's it. And it is a, to it is a total lie. The bottom line, it will not have access into the kingdom of heaven. There, the only way we can prove the will of God for each of our lives in doing the will and purpose of God is to literally sanctify ourselves holy and acceptable unto God, having a transformed mind, the mind of Christ, not conformed to this world, but being transformed, a transformation by the renewing of our mind. It must be renewed that we may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for each of us is. By doing that, we will fulfill the purpose and will of God in each individual's life that he has dealt to us already the measure of faith to accomplish that. That that is determined will be done. All we have to do is draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to us, being obedient servants uh, unto righteousness, unto holiness. 
and whosoever we yield our members as servants to obey him of the servants to whom we obey, whether of sin and the death, having a carnal mind, is still death, even though we have the Holy Ghost. Or to be spiritually minded of obedience unto righteousness, unto holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now we are warned in a Hebrews 6 that if we sin willingly, they're not listening to the leading of the Holy Ghost and obedience, and we willingly sin, they remain with no more sacrifice for sin that we have willingly done this, being warned of the Holy Ghost, being warned of God not to do so. They remain with no more sacrifice for sin, for we would crucify afresh again the Son of God. We find also in Hebrews 12, that's a Hebrews 6. In Hebrews 12, we find again that Cain, even though slew Abel, Esau, all of these wanted repentance. Take a look at Hebrews 12. And he says that we are to endure. Endure hardships as a good soldier. Very few, people, few do. They think, well, God's not blessing us. Endure hardship as a good soldier because God is working in your life. When a person will repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Ghost, and born again, according to the scriptures of being born again in Acts 2.38, the promise of you to your children, to as many as, to, as that are far off, even to as many as the Lord our God shall call, you're born again as little newborn babies. You grow to the next step. That's little children. Why? Well, now you have the revelation that he is the Father, 1 John 2, 12-14. You know that Jesus is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty manifest in the flesh. He is God, the Father of glory. Reveal. But that's still not enough. You have to do the will of God, find the purpose of God. And he said, first in the church apostles. Somebody said, well, I'm not an apostle. Well, fine. We have to find out what the will of God is for each individual, each one of our lives, what that will and purpose is. To do that, we have to get into the Word of God and seek God personally and find that will and purpose of God. And the only way to do that is to present our bodies a living sacrifice. As in 2 Thessalonians 2, the second chapter, that Paul states that you are saved through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Charity is the bond or guarantee of perfectness coming unto perfection. That charity it will cover a multitude of sins. But charity is something that has to be sought after and add to your faith virtue. Be true with God and virtuous. And then to virtue, we add knowledge. My people perish for our love, lack of knowledge. Then the knowledge of God, we add to that knowledge uh, temperance, self-control. Those that, that literally strive for the mastery must be temperate or self-controlled in all things, all things of faith, and obedient in all things, spirit, soul, and body. Then temperance. We have to add to our temperance patience, but patience must have her work, her perfect work that after we've done the will of God, we have need of patience that we'll receive a full reward. What works that patience? Tribulation does. Here's the cross, my friend. Tribulation worketh patience. That's trouble. Somebody said, I've never had any trouble in my life of tribulation. Well, then you're not saved because tribulation worketh patience. Patience then worketh experience. You have experience in God having your senses exercised thereby, to discern both good from evil. And that experience then worketh hope. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Without that cross in our life, that tribulation, that persecution, then there's no sanctification of the Spirit. We suffer for righteousness' sake. And if you do not suffer with him, you will not reign with him. That sufferings and the second Corinthians, the first chapter states that, that as you have suffered for Christ, so is also your partaker of that sufferings. You will be partakers of the consolation. And that is a promise of God. 
Now, God will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able. First Corinthians 10, 13, he will not allow it. He knows what you're able to stand and he is faithful to you that he, no matter what you go through, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them out of them all. Whatever you're going through, Paul said, I will glory in my infirmities. Why? Because when I'm weak, then am I strong? We depend on God, no matter what the situation is. Whatever we stumble, we fall, we get back up. We give God the glory. It didn't say all things are good. It said all things work together for good to them that are the called, to them that, are, that God loves and are called according to the purpose of God. He is molding us as a potter does to the clay. And we cannot say to the, the potter, why have you made me thus? Why have you made me this way? Because he's fashioned it according to his will, his purpose. And what we do is give him the glory, the praise, the honor, because it's God that's working in us, both the willing to do of his good pleasure, not of ours. And because we want our will done and we demand our will, rather than the will of God, then many will have a root of bitterness spring up and many therewith be defiled because we do not want to do the will of God. We want to do our own will that we think that God should and would have, could have be pleased with. And that's simply not the case. No man can do his own will. He must do the will of God. You have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God that will continue both to what to do of his good pleasure, not of ours. And when this works, the root of bitterness, there we find that after we being uh, literally the Lord dealing with us and many trials that we go through, that when persecution, tribulation arises, for the word's sake, by and by, many are offended and they bring forth no fruits unto perfection. They will not suffer for the cause of Christ. My friend, sufferings is essential. It's the cross. If a person be without that cross or crossless Christianity, they will never come forth unto perfection. And that's what Jesus states in Matthew 7. Now all say to me, Lord, Lord, born again, newborn babies now, little children, calling him Lord Jehovah God Almighty, that no man could call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12, they know he's the Lord, but will not some, not all, it says only some, not all that say to me, Lord, Lord, will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven because they did not do the will of God. Maybe they knew what the will was, but they had excuses. Well, I have children to raise, or I have a uh, responsibility to my job, or whatever the case is, or business, or whatever. Or this is what I've always tried to do and wanted to do in my life, and what I went to college and university for, whatever got my degrees, and this is what I'm going to do, and God, you have to bless me in doing it. No. You have to do and seek out the will of God and do it. It's very plain. And the only way to find that will of God is not to be conformed to this world. Take up the cross and follow Jesus. As Jesus stated, the first state that Jesus stated to any man or woman that wants to follow him, if any man will come after me, let him first deny himself. Deny himself? Yes, your self-will. Your volition, what you want to do what your plan and purpose and will work for your life is not doing the will of God. But the church telling you, well, you're saved anyway. You've asked Jesus to come into your heart. You've said the sinner's prayer and you're saved. You believe Jesus is the son of God and that's it. Not telling you the whole truth that in obedience, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you will obey him obedience unto righteousness and holiness, doing the will of God in, in Romans 6. We must do the will of God in order to have access to the kingdom of heaven as stated in the Constitution, the kingdom of heaven, in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, where Jesus lays out the bylaws of the kingdom of heaven. We must read them and do it. And it is the greatest sermon ever preached by the Lord himself. But few even have read it. 
They look at John 3, 16. Uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Stop there and say, there, I believe he's the Son of God. There, I have everlasting life. And pretty well, I know the rest of the book. Not realizing that God requires obedience. And that is a doctrine of the devil that has slept into the church and crept in. And many have been slayed by that spirit of slothfulness, thinking, well, it's easy believism. Nothing God requires that I just believe with a mental assent, with an intellectual belief, and I'm saved. That is a lie. You must believe with your heart. The heart's in the spirit, and that is doing the will of God. We find in Hebrews 12, and it says that looking diligently unto Jesus, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Somebody said, you can't fail of the grace of God. Grace won't fail you, but you can fail of the grace of God. Look at Hebrews 12, verse 15. It is very straightforward. The word uh, means what it says, says what it means. Looking diligently, seeking God diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. That's the effectual working of the Holy Ghost which grace ranks through righteousness. Romans 5, it requires obedience. Romans 6, grace is not this unmerited favor of God. It reigns through something. Grace reigns through righteousness. And the righteousness of God is by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And there we find that Paul goes on and says, I'm telling you, Mother, that look diligently then to the Lord to do his will, his purpose, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. You're troubling your spirit. You have no peace. Why? You're not doing the will of God. You want to run your own race and not the race for God. You want to do your own will and not the will of God. You think God should be pleased with whatever you decide to do with your life. After all, it's your life. No. You're bought with a price. You're not your own. And there's a purpose and will of God that each one of us have to do. If God has called in the different ministrations, he said, first, firstly, in the church, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. That is God's uh, hierarchy. Thirdly, we have uh, teachers. That is pastors, evangelists, teachers. Then we have of workers of miracles, gifts of healings, helps, governments, each of these offices, uh, there we must find what we as individual members of the body of Christ must do and endure hardship as a good soldier. What, in what manner of man would anyone be that joins uh, the Army, Air Force, uh, their uh, Navy or Marines, and thinks they're going into the service without having the sufferings of a serviceman. Then being going through boot camp and being set out for the purpose and call, therefore their country, to literally obey the, the uh, constitution of the kingdom that they have vowed to do, each one, and thinking they're not going to have any literally denying of self to do that will there to be a good soldier. Well, God requires the same. To be a good soldier of the cross, we are to endure hardship as a good soldier, endeavoring to keep the faith, to literally suffer hardships for his name's sake. That is called sanctification of the spirit. It is uh, literally crucifying the deeds of the flesh. And there are a lot there to be crucified. And he states those in Galatians 5, the works of the flesh that must be done away with if we are to enter the kingdom of heaven, regardless of what any lying pastor or minister says to us. We must look out of the book and read, not one of these things shall fail to the law, the law of the spirit of life, and to the testimony, the testimony of Jesus. If any man speak not according to this word, it is because there is no life in him. Not some like, no like. And we go on and read that Paul says, how critical is this? 
finding the will of God and do it. Well, if we don't, then we, we literally will come up in a troublesome spirit, never having peace with God because we're not doing his will. And it will bring up a root of bitterness. We become bitter, angry, because we want to do our own will. And we look for good things and blessings, and behold, trouble comes. Trouble is going to come. Tribulation, trouble, worketh patience. Patience worketh experience, and experience worketh hope. That's God's law. Just like it states here, and a warning, looking diligent, lest any man fail of the grace of God. We can fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, not only you, but your family, and uh, the ones that are associates of you, that have conversation with you. It is a slaying uh, uh, spirit there that will slay you at the very root of your spirit. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, not obeying God, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. It wasn't important to him. He sold his birthright. He goes on and says, for you know how that afterward, think, well, I messed up. Okay, fine. I'll just simply repent. I'll live my life this way. I sold my birthright, not just uh, stumbled, but I literally sold it. I literally gave it all and literally succumbed to the voice of Satan and his uh, uh, demonic angels, fallen spirits, and I have listened to this and literally have sold my birthright. We can say, no matter what, I'm going to do my will. And when you've sold that birthright, friend, there's no way to get it back. Somebody says, there's no sin and death. Yes, there is. There's a sin and death. There's a sin not unto death. John says, I say not. You should pray for the sin unto death. For there is a sin unto death. I say not that you should pray for that. All unrighteousness is sin. We're missing the mark. We're not walking in the light as he's in the light in present truth. But we pray, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to us. He'll keep us between the ditches and get us there if we seek him diligently. That's what Paul is stating here in the book of Hebrews. Then he says, for you know, talking about Esau, how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, we want heaven made. We want access to the kingdom of heaven. He was rejected. Jesus stated, not all that say to me, Lord, Lord, will be able to enter in. They will be rejected. They didn't do the will of God. Why? For he found no place of repentance. Esau was rejected. He found no place of repentance, just like those there at the judgment seat of Christ, saying, Lord, we prophesied in your name. In your name, we cast out devils. In your name, we've done many wonderful works. And he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you the work of iniquity. Iniquity is lawlessness. You did not obey the leading of the Spirit of God, doing the purpose and will of God for your life. Therefore, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You're rejected. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Friend, we don't want to be in that number. When we start that race, no matter, have the will, uh, you made up your will and uh, your resolve. You're going to live for God. Come what? Tribulation, what persecution? For his name's sake, nothing will knock you out. And if anything can knock you out, be it family, friends, be it persecution, be it for the, uh, the burden you carry in Christ, and they think it's foolishness because the cross to the world is foolishness to them. They perish, and they'll mock you over it just as they have done to all the apostles, the Lord Jesus and Christ himself. Thou being a man, makest thyself God. For this reason we stone you. Crucified him later on, because he being a man made himself God, that he is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, the Savior of the world, that he is the, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God of glory, the Son of God being Father revealed. And for that reason, they crucified him. They said he blasphemed him. Well, Esau's rejected. Many will be rejected in that they think they've done the will of God. They did their own will. They didn't make their calling election sure in charity. Charity is a bond of perfection. 
Cherry is a guarantee that you will have access to the kingdom of heaven. It rejoiced in the truth and obeyed it. When Esau tried to find repentance, he could not. Why? Because he was rejected because he had not done the will of God. Because he sold that birthright. We have to be very careful to maintain our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and not let it be totally destroyed at any time through vain philosophy, uh, the fear of men, tradition of the elders, make the word of God not effect, so many different things. You have to hold that line. Stand for that truth. You have to endure that hardship as a good soldier, knowing that God is for you and you will not fail if you diligently seek him. Don't be as Esau. For he could not find repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He was rejected. It is a warning to us that even as Job is given to us for an example, you're going through something. You're going through trials and tribulations. You're going through maybe uh, different infirmities of the flesh, trials of the faith, and count it all a joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Though your faith be tried as by fire, that it will come forth as pure gold. Know that God's for you. You can't fail, cannot fail with God. He is the God of battles. He's the man of war. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Always hold the line, counting your salvation dear to you more than any other thing in the world that the world can offer you. All that's in the world that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For all that's in the world, the love of the, the lust of the eyes, the pride of the flesh, the lust of the, uh, the flesh, and that's pride of life. The world passes away with the lust thereof, but whosoever doeth the will of God shall abide forever. You have to do the will of God. You love God, you keep his commandments. You will fulfill the calling and purpose of God in your life. And it will be sweet to your mouth. It will be pleasing to your Lord Jesus Christ. Well, friend, if this has bore witness with your spirit, we love to work with you there as this gospel is going out to all the world. The true gospel, not a trinity, but a true one God, Jesus' only doctrine of Christ, then we want to work with you. You can contact me at my email, sealinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. There, message me, email me, and I'll get right back to you where we can work together. The body of Christ coming together in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. There, when we come to the unity of that faith in that one mind, one accord, God will be lifted up. We'll speak the same things. We'll be in that present truth of the Word of God. You can also visit our websites, and that is DennisBeard.org. You'll find seven books there authored by yours truly. To, for your edification in doing the will of God in the revelation of Jesus. Also, sealinggodspeople.org, sealinggodspeople.com, and uh, jcic.tv, there where we will correspond with you on the Jesus Christ International Church.tv site at jcic.tv. You can also write to me, Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. Well, maybe we'd love to hear from you. Be sure, don't hesitate, don't procrastinate. And to notify us, I look forward to meeting you. We'll work together. In the meantime, I pray for each individual member of the body of Christ that God will perfect that which is lacking in each one of us, that we all may be presented blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in both body, soul, and spirit. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold, the real Jesus. Yes, brethren, we're in the last of the last days. All know that. All that studied any eschatology at all know that. But where are we as far as the body of Christ coming together in the true revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the last book in the Word of God? The revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things, which must shortly come to pass and signified it by his angel unto John. We, the body of Christ, have to come together. Those of you 
that know the voice of God. You know the voice and are led by the Spirit of God. You are the sons of God. You are the ones that God has called for this last day work of the ministry. That last day work of the ministry is through the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for this gospel to be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. For us to come together is critical. I want you to contact me. We need to work together. We've had more downloads on Feeling God's People on our daily podcast than ever before. We know that there are the listeners that know the Spirit of God. You're led of the Holy Ghost. You are the sons of God. And God dealing with all of us to come together as one. So I put it before you. Contact me. We have several different contacts there on uh, social media. Of course, the daily podcast, Sealing God's People, there, simply download the app, tune in daily, as many of you are doing, up in the thousands down. We thank God for you. We need to move. We need to come together. There, you can email me at sealinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. Again, my email address, sealinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. You can also help Send this gospel for the Jesus-only training centers throughout the world where the ministers are crying out for it. They're at dennisbeard.org, our website there, promoting our e-books. There are seven e-books there, and four of them do with the Godhead uh, that God is moving uh, many out of the false doctrine of Trinity into the true revelation of Jesus Christ, the true God and eternal Live Jesus, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent Spirit of God, Jesus' only doctrine of Christ. We have four books on the Godhead. Behold the real Jesus, Christ, the revelation of the Son of God. Hear, O Israel, and uh, the eras of the Trinity. These four go into detail about how God works salvation in and of himself Our God, Jehovah, is our salvation, Jesus. Also, why it is so essential for the soul out in the last days, uh, selling out and why the word of God in the constitution of the kingdom of heaven commands us to sell out. That is uh, an essential for the true Christian. There we also have the great deception the 603 score and six, the keys of stigma, exactly what it is. And the manifested sons of God, the true doctrine of the manifested sons of God, which that has been watered uh, down through the 1940s and 50s, saying that it was some great person that was going to lead the body of Christ instead of a body ministry. The work of the ministry is the church of the living God coming together in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, uh, unto a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There, Dennis Beard, we have received uh, a visitation from our Lord Jesus Christ on the 19th of January, 2019. Many of you have heard that already. While in trans Kenya, Africa, saying, Seal my people by my word, even as I send by angel ascending from the east, Having this seal of the living God, so send I you. Now, this is not for any of our righteousness or our holiness that the Lord spoke this to me. It is the body of Christ coming together in the unity of the faith. And well, it's a call there for the body of Christ to come into one mind and one accord now. Please contact me. Some of you are not called, uh, all are called for first apostles, secondarily prophets. Thirdly, teachers, gifts of miracles, gifts of healings, uh, governments, helps. But all, each individual member of the body of Christ has a specific call for us to do for the body of Christ uh, to fulfill the will of God in these last days with the gospel of the kingdom being preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. So we implore you. Please contact me so we can uh, meet where we can work together. Africa is crying out. We have over a thousand ministers in Africa. 
that have left the false trinity doctrine into the true doctrine of Christ. Not only that, but India, Nepal, Pakistan, Philippines, uh, New Zealand, it's on and on that the ministers are crying out, we need your help. They're asking for the Jesus Only Training Centers to be placed in their nations. We feel the call to do that, but we can't do it alone. It takes us, the body of Christ, coming together. And God will literally put it together and uh, then compact it. Of whichever joint supplies to the edifying of a seven love, the body of Christ will come together. And uh, as the Lord has dealt with you individually, and you know the voice of the Son of God, you know the Holy Ghost, you know that there is more in the body of Christ for us to do in the will of God, then please contact me. The information is on your screen. There, DennisBeard.org is our site, website. We also have SealingGodsPeople.org, SealingGodsPeople.com. For those of you that would like to get our daily uh, ministry, uh, I get notices there what we're doing. You can go to jcic.tv. That's Jesus Christ International Church.tv. The abbreviated jcic.tv. Join up with us, and I will write to you individually on that website. It's made for the ministers worldwide. There, you simply uh, join up uh, where you're from, and uh, then you will get notices and the daily podcast as well as the streaming and these uh, broadcasts will be uploaded for you there as well as questions and answers as well as blogs we need to come together again contact me you can also write me that is dbm dennis beard ministries post office box 2906 longview texas zip code 75606 don't procrastinate. You that know the voice of the Son of God, you know the Holy Ghost leading. Don't procrastinate. Do it now, and I look forward to meeting you. Till the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold, the real Jesus. <laughs>